Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, this is Christ the Entirety Foundation coming your way once again with the touch in the heart of reality. Um, this is your brother Philip. And today we have come your way once again to bring to you the word of the Lord. Um, in order for us to keep in pace with the Lord, we need to be in alignment to his word. And so we have been instructed again to bring unto us the word of the Lord. Today we have titled our message, The Generation of Witnesses. The Generation of Witnesses. And that is the message that we bring to you this moment. Um, stay with us as we go into the word of the Lord. Whilst we try to um, bring out the things that the Lord is telling us in this season. But before then, let us um, share a word of prayer as we will proceed into the word. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all honor, all praise, all adoration belongs to you alone. There is no other God but you. There is none beside you, there is none after you, and there is none ahead of you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are grateful for the many things you keep doing for us, even the things that you are yet to do for us. We acknowledge your power, we acknowledge your presence, we acknowledge your hand upon our lives. And so we ask that you come and teach us. We ask that you come and help us see beyond the veil, that you will open the eyes of our understanding. We also ask that give us an heart to receive so that your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, people of God, we have come again with a message that we have as the generation of witnesses. The generation of witnesses. Um, we need to understand who we are. We need to understand what we have been called in. We need to know our identity in Christ, even in the Lord Jesus. So that it will be in this state that we can properly function as believers of the Lord. And so come with me to the book of John chapter 1. Okay, so John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It says, The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. It says, In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. And it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The question is that, are you sent from God? If you are sent from God, then listen to verse 7. It says that the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the light, that all men through him might believe. Now, this is John who came to bear witness. And so, what we need to know that every believer in the Lord is called to bear witness. And so we have been called as witnesses unto our Lord Jesus. And so people of God, we are saying that every child of God is called to be a witness unto the Lord. Are you there? Now, Acts chapter 1. It says, the former three ties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach unto the day in which he was taken up after 
that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Now, it says in verse 5, it says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now verse 6 says, When they therefore came, when they were, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And in verse 7 he said, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time and the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. Are you there? That is to say, it is not for them to know the time and the season that with the Lord or his Father has put in his own authority. Now verse 8 says, but nevertheless, even though he gave them that answer, he says, nevertheless, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Did we get that? Now, Jesus is telling his disciples that um, they don't need to even know when um, the Father will restore the kingdom of Israel. But what they need to know is that they should tarry, and when they tarry, the promise of the Father will come upon them. And that promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit that will come upon them. And when that Spirit comes upon them, they will receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon them. And they shall be witnesses. Witnesses. And they shall be witnesses. And they shall be witnesses. And they shall be witnesses. So I would like for us to know that every believer in the Lord is called to be a witness. And that witness is not unto anybody and not unto ourselves, but unto the Lord Jesus. Because he said, you shall be witnesses unto me in all the earth, in even the uppermost, the uttermost part of the earth. Are you there? So, Jesus is saying that we will literally become like an ambassador. We will literally become like people that can attest to the fact that Jesus is alive. And no one can attest to that until they have received the Holy Spirit and on top of the Holy Spirit, power. To be able to attest to the fact that Jesus is alive. Are you here? So, people of God, I'm saying that we have been called into witness, into witnessing unto our Lord Jesus. So, let's go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15 from verse 26 to 27. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. This is what Jesus is saying. That the Holy Spirit that will come upon us, that will come upon you and me, when he comes upon us, we will be able to testify of Jesus, not ourselves, not even of the Holy Spirit, but of our Lord Jesus. He said, He shall testify of me, 
and ye shall bear witness ye shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning this is jesus um, speaking to his disciples for them to know that he has ordained them to be witnesses unto himself so that if any man be in Christ he is a witness unto the Lord he is not just called to just be a believer and say he's a believer but he will receive such power of the Holy Spirit in order to 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 attest to the fact that Jesus is not just an event that happened but Jesus is real and truth and he is alive even as we speak now stay with me i take that verse 27 again in john chapter 15 it says and ye shall and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning and that is to say that um there is a level of knowledge that jesus must have handed over to these men in order for them to be witnesses it means they know something about this person that they are proclaiming this person that they are they are actually dispensing because Jesus is a person and that person they must have at least a knowledge of him in order to attest to the fact that this is the person we are talking about and he is real and alive even as we speak now are you here so revelations chapter 19 from verse 6 to 10 it says that and i heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thunderings saying hallelujah for the lord god omnipotent reigneth let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife had made herself ready it means that for us to be witnesses there is a level of readiness that we are supposed to be in we have to be prepared that is why john the baptist um his is to make a people ready and a people prepared for the day of the Lord. Now in verse 8 says that, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saint. At least we should be able to walk in righteousness. One, righteousness as the gift and two, righteousness as a proof of our conduct, which is our character. So yes, we know we have the gift of righteousness and we also have hmm, the works of righteousness. That is our character. We must work it. That's what 1 John chapter 3, verse 17 says, that we know that he that doeth righteousness is of God. And so, verse 9 says, And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, listen to the verse 10. He said, And I fell at his feet and worshipped. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy now what am I trying to bring our mind into that we must have a level of encounter with him that we can be granted access to the mysteries of the knowledge of the Son of God and that is the only way we can be accurate witnesses unto the Lord so as we were reading from the book of John we we'll continue from verse John chapter 1 let's continue from verse 6 it says 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. Do you see that? So, um, it is in the ordination of people to bear witness to that light. Because our Lord is light. Now, verse 9 says, That was the... That was the true light which lighted up every man that came into the world. That is the light of God, the light of Jesus. He said, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. He said, He came unto His own domain, His own things that He has created, even creation, even man. But even those same things knew him not because they have been corrupted since the fall of man. Now verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave him power. To them gave him the authority, the right to become the sons of God, to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. Which were, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but they were born of God. So, in our level of witnessing, we need to be born of God. Not just the will of man, not just the will of the flesh, but the, these witnesses must be born of God. You want to be a witness, you must be born of God. And we know that any man that is born of God has steward sin. He does not commit sin because his seed is in such man that he cannot commit sin. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him. Do you see that? It continues to mention about the witness because he has been called to bear witness just as you and I have been called to bear witness. In whatever dimension that may be, know that we all have been called to bear witness. So whatever dimension that is, there must be a level of witness that must come in that your office of ordination. There must be a level of witness that must accompany the things that you are actually doing as being ordained by God. He says, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of him I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we have all we received and grace for grace so we have received something from the lord that we need to keep and we need to grow in in order for us to become witnesses unto the lord are you with me stay with me and in we becoming witnesses there must be some kind of grace that must come upon us as the believer in order to bear witness to these same things that we are talking about which is jesus christ himself because we need grace to talk about him so anything that have been captured in the word when we go into the word that's why he said he shall receive the Holy Spirit and also power so that we can be accurate witnesses unto him so that the Holy Spirit can teach us the ways into the word of God whereby we can begin to um, have experience of this witness that we are talking about in order for us to share these things that we claim to witness so in Luke chapter 9 verse 1 to 2 he said then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over devils and to cure all diseases 
and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. This is bearing witness to the Lord. Because it, it is the same thing that the Lord himself also came to do. So if I claim that Jesus Christ is alive and he came to heal the sick and also to, to preach the gospel, it means I must also be doing something similar like that. I must also be doing the same thing in order for me to bring that same witness that I am talking about. That in the preaching of the gospel, the sick are being healed and them that are possessed are being delivered. And it will be in that state that we can say in a particular flow of river or dimension that we are bringing um, such witnesses unto our Lord. Because people will ask you if he is alive, prove it. And that is the proof that we have. And that proof is by the Holy Spirit and by the power for us to be able to do the things that Jesus did. And it will be on the strength of those things that people can believe that what we are saying is true. So as we preach the kingdom, as we preach the gospel, it will be that it will be the Holy Spirit that is coming forth out of you um, to bring that witness unto them also so that people's heart can be pricked for them to receive Christ. If we preach without the Holy Spirit and with power, there will be no conviction. People will just be hearing and listening to whatever it is that we are saying. But in this time, there is a level of power that we need in order to bring men that will bow their feet before the throne of our Lord. And that is witness. In Luke chapter 10, verse 18 to 20, he says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemies. Then he said, And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Now, Jesus is trying to show them the end point of being a witness. That when you become a successful witness, the end of whatever it is that you have witnessed to that is a dimension in God, it is supposed to bring you to that place where your name is written in heaven. Just like he told his 12 disciples that I will write your name in the pillars of the kingdom of my father. So it is not about just proclaiming what we are proclaiming, even the Lord, yes. But he says we, we should rejoice not because the spirits are subject to us, but we should rejoice because our names are written in heaven. Why? Because we have been accurately witnessing unto the Lord. And so I'm here to tell you that Jesus is looking for witnesses in this time. He's looking for men that will become his witness. Men that will become his spokesmen. Men that will become his extension. Men that will become um, the overflow of him. That when men see you, they lose us though they are seeing the Lord himself. That is why he says that as we behold, we are transformed and we are changed into his image. So that in that image, we are accurately witnessing unto the Lord. So, people of God, Jesus is looking for witnesses in this generation. And so we bring to you this message for you to know that we are a generation of witnesses. Jesus never called us Christians. He called us witnesses 
people that will attest to him Jesus that he is Lord that he is the Savior of mankind that he is king that he has come to fulfill the will of his father in order to bring man into the kingdom of God and back into the alignment of that fallen state to bring man into the will of God once again so people of God until witnesses arise the church will be lacking so Jesus is looking for witness the question is are you witnessing unto the Lord what is it that you are witnessing to is it unto the Lord Jesus unto any man unto another man or unto yourself or unto who our witnesses must be pointed to the Lord Jesus and it can only happen by the Holy Spirit and by the power of God so people of God in this time God wills to raise a generation of witnesses and when we say this we are not only talking about people that are in ministry every believer of God every child of God is supposed to be a witness unto God accurately unto the Lord Jesus so people of God we bring you this word to charge you we bring you this word to know for you to know who you are your identity in the Lord as a witness unto the Lord and so people of God we come with this message for us to remind ourselves that indeed we have been called to be a witness unto our Lord so the thing is that we keep telling ourselves that we will not fail because if we fail we fail our Lord Jesus we are as ambassadors of our Lord upon the face of the earth because our Lord Jesus is in heaven he needs men that will be accurate functionaries as witnesses unto him that's why he said even the Holy Spirit when he comes he will not testify of himself but he will testify of him Jesus praise God let us share a word of prayer as we trust that the Lord will help us in becoming genuine witnesses unto him and so precious father we thank you we bless your name we acknowledge your presence we acknowledge your power we thank you for your word that has come we thank you that you will give us grace we thank you for your mercies also enable us by your spirit that will make us witnesses witnesses full of the spirit and full of power witnesses that will rise because you called us in you even in glory we know that it cannot be done on we on the will of any man not on the will of the flesh but on the will of god and so we know that all things are fulfilled in you Christ Jesus come and help us by your spirit grant us the ability to become accurate functionaries as witnesses unto you give us a heart give us the strength that we need give us your spirit give us the necessary enablement even in this season and let your name alone be glorified Father, we thank you because in you we believe and in you we know all things are ordained. Thank you once again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.